now let's go towards this uh, let's l get a little bit more specific okay so all the good nice pictures are done finally we have to come back to maxwell's equations right uh, right so we are going to make some simple assumptions we are going to assume single frequency e to the g omega t and we'll make the problem 2d and we'll take a single polarization ez ez corresponds to which polarization tm right tm polarization yeah ez hx hy so much of this is going to be familiar to you all because we are going to use a volume integral method right that is the most uh, easiest and most intuitive way to formulate this inverse imaging problem okay so this is volume integral first equation well okay so here are your maxwell equations curl of e curl of h and i have put a j term over here what do you do next start so this is a revision for you all for for volume integral i want to eliminate one variable so what do i do take a curl of the first equation right and um, play around with a little bit uh, divergence of e is zero in a 2d problem over here so i get a wave equation right we are familiar with all of this then we specialize this in two different cases right with object without object so with object is equation 4 and without object is equation 3 what is the difference between these two cases the current source is there in both cases with and without object the only difference is the object's presence came to be known due to permittivity term that's the only difference right any other difference you can think of of course the electric fields are different they had better be different mu can also be different yeah mu can also be different but i, I mean unless you are uh, trying to image some magnetic medium will which is usually like the human body is not a magnetic medium right so over there mu r is one so that complication we need not worry about yeah so the only di difference is electric field uh, changes from incident to total that's one change and the second change is i have permittivity as a function of space right we have already seen this what you do is you subtract these two equations and subtract these two equations and uh, i want to keep the left hand side to have only k not squared i don't want this epsilon r term on the uh, left hand side and uh, we'll we'll come to why then i have no choice but to move the epsilon r term to the right hand side okay so this is a familiar equation to us by now okay there is so you you'll notice now in everything that follows this epsilon r minus 1 this is what appears in every equation will appear in every equation because it always comes as one term together so it becomes a little cumbersome to every time write epsilon r minus 1 epsilon r minus 1 so what do i do is i define a new variable i call it contrast and that contrast is simply this epsilon r minus 1 okay so it's it's there's nothing new about it it's just a convenient way to hold that uh, and make the right hand side look little bit more compact fine familiar to everyone so i have just rewritten that same equation now i have the contrast term over here on the right hand side right and actually at this point we can make a distinguish uh, uh, a distinction between forward problems and inverse problems we already knew this intuitively but forward problem looking at this equation is what give me ei and epsilon r right and give and as a result obtain electric field everywhere that is what the forward problem was which is what we did in the volume integral formulation right we assume that for example the uh, permittivity of the an aircraft that was given to you that's the forward problem now inverse problem looking at this equation is uh, you are going to be given the electric field so if i give you incident field and scattered field from that you can get total field right so e is given to you e incident is also given to you because you have designed the transmitting antenna right and you want to obtain permittivity everywhere okay so this is just a revision of what you already know in a little bit more formal way and this is this is a real challenge of this problem the forward problem gives me unique solutions and the inverse problem on the other hand has infinite solutions 
and we will see mathematically why there are infinite solutions. So imagine why this is a challenging problem. You have infinite possible values of epsilon r which are giving you the same scattered field. That is what infinite solutions means. That means there are infinite possible configurations of the tissue which can conspire to give you the same scattered field. So how do you know which one is the correct one? Actually you do not know. So you have to make a very good engineering guess about which one to choose which is why this problem becomes a very good mix of not just electromagnetics but also signal processing. Okay? Because just electromagnetics alone you get infinite solutions you cannot solve it any further. Okay. So let us see. So coming back to this equation we know how to solve this right? and that is using the theory of Green's functions. Right? So Green's functions uh, that is why I needed this k naught squared over here. So this equation and this equation both of these equations the the form of the operator is the same right. So I should write it again yeah. The form of the operator is the same what is the form of the operator del square plus k naught squared right. What is different is here the right hand side is something and here the right hand side is delta function. And how did we solve this equation? Yeah, but how did we arrive at that? We took the impulse, we took this Green's function definition, we multiplied this by what? The right hand side of the first equation and integrated it over R prime, right? And it equation, this equation 2 became exactly the solution to equation 1. And that is written over here, over here, the solution, right? So it is the convolution of this Green's function, which we have spent a lot of time studying in a, mod, uh, in a module on Green's function, convolved with whatever was on the right hand side. So what was on the right hand side? Chi r e r, that chi r e r is appearing over here, k naught squared has come out. And what is all of this equal to? E minus e i, right? So in this equation, now you can appreciate the forward problem. Epsilon r is given to you, that means chi r is known. Green's function we have calculated. So, in this is an integral equation, my unknown is both inside the equation and outside the equation, right. So, I solve for E given this, right. Now that, so while that, now that, that is clear, let us go further. This is how we had solved this integral equation. As I mentioned, the unknown is both outside and inside the integral. So, what did we do? We took our domain and we discretized it into little, little squares in a 2D problem squares in a 3D problem cubes right. and the simplest way to solve this was using a what is called a pulse basis function. So what is a pulse basis? 1 inside a little square 0 everywhere else out right. So you have all done this and solved this for your um, in your assignments and uh, I write this electric field now as a summation over all of these pulse basis functions p and r each of them having an unknown weight u n right. So u n's are the unknowns earlier the field was unknown now my unknown is a bunch of scalars u n will these u n's be real or complex valued in general complex valued right your p n is of course real valued pulse function is just 1 or 0 but u n can be complex and then how did we solve it we made this r vector cycle over each one of these points one by one. So when I take r to be one point, I get one long equation in n variables. What is the, the thing to be taken care of over there? When I am solving this equation, I have to choose, let us say there are n pixels. I have to worry about the singularity. When I take uh, my the r which is in the red font, when I take r to be one point in the pixel, I iterate over all the other pixels, all others are fine except the self pixel. There I have to do the singularity a little bit carefully, but it is not a problem because this Green's function we know has a integrable singularity. So I get it in closed form, right? That is how I get my n by n system of equations, right? So for solving the forward problem, no problem, okay? That is how I got my ER, right? So we, this is the strategy that we used for the uh, forward problem. Now the reason I am uh, spending so much time on recapping the forward problem is because the inverse problem is very similar 
in structure okay so let's look at what happens so the inverse scattering problem now back to our favorite equation right so now when i want to solve it i am going to make a few steps to get it into the language of linear algebra right because we don't solve it in continuous variables we discretize it so this electric field uh inside the medium i am going to call it u okay you, um this chi r i am going to call it x and this incident electric field i am going to call it small e okay so these are just column vectors what is given to me is the scattered field right now this domain was capital d do i know the scattered field inside the domain or outside the domain outside the domain obviously because it's a non invasive method i cannot go inside the domain and measure field so i have this electric field that is measured only outside the domain so what is scattered field total minus incident right so e minus ei is being recorded into a column vector s okay of course r should not belong to d so all of these are complex valued column vectors okay straight forward this is my domain again so s is the the ring of uh, receivers and d is the domain of interest okay now this equation over here has can take two avatars or two forms as as you can see first is when this r vector belongs to the domain okay so this this r over here it's my choice where to set it so when i want to solve the forward problem what do i do is i say i choose r to belong to this domain and i cycle over all the internal points get n by n system but let's see what it what happens in terms of linear algebra so let's just discretize this equation one by one one term by one term first term electric field what happens it becomes u okay just take this equation and symbol by symbol let's write it in the language of linear algebra so the first uh, term is er which becomes u next is all of this k not square integral g chi e chi is known in the forward problem okay so we are going to call it x okay and then i have a u which is unknown and the right hand side is known which is e small e okay so we call this what this is this is given the name is called a state equation because it tells something about the state of the uh domain okay and if i am if i if you give me x i can solve for u right i can take u common from the left hand side i will get identity minus gdx which i have to invert and get the electric field right uh, and this gd matrix it has full rank it's a square matrix n by n not only is it square it also has full rank therefore it is invertible so i minus gd is also invertible right and it has a unique solution right so this all we know now i can choose to move r out of d right so that gives me the second equation so when r is outside d okay so now what i'll do is this e i term over here i can move it to the left hand side and this whole integral term over here i'll move it to the right hand side so e minus ei becomes s right e minus ei for all r belonging to capital s this becomes the scattered field smallest okay then i have this whole integral over here k not square g x e the uh, now in this equation when r is in capital s the kind the form of this is going to be different than what it was over here here r and r prime both belong to d here what happens is r belongs to s but r prime continues to belong to d so the values of the matrix coefficients will obviously be different the integrals will be different so i'm going to call this a different matrix gs just to distinguish it from this gd guy there is a gs matrix okay and all of these my chi has been replaced by the vector x so it appears over there and electric field is unknown u yeah 
So this is called the data equation because it is giving me a prediction of what my scattered field data should be because that is what I measure. I only measure scattered field. I measure S, S is given to me. Okay. So, G S into U into X is a kind of a prediction of what the scattered field should be if you give me U and X. Actually, I do not even know U and X, that is the problem. But if you were to give it to me, I can tell you, I can predict that this should be the scattered field. So, yeah. if you could figure it out from R velocity, you can actually substitute that as well. If you could, we will see what is the problem in that, right. So, uh, now we can come, we can try to understand the whole problem of infinite solutions. Why are there infinite solutions? This GS matrix over here is actually underdetermined. Okay, so how many measurements will I make? Right, so what will be the length of this S vector? How many how many ever measurements I have? That will be the length of S. Right, if I have ten measurements on the outside ring, then S has only ten entries only 10 points where E minus E i was measured, right. So, if I call that say M, M measurements, that is your S. Now, this domain over here, I am going to, I want to determine it to a very high resolution, right. So, I am going to chop it up into various such pixels over here. So, some number N, right. So, X is going to be of size N and at each point each pixel over here, x is the unknown, but what is also there? u, the internal field over here, right? This e, e which is sitting inside the integral, that is also unknown, and that will be the number of unknown electric fields inside the medium is the same as the number of pixels that I have slashed this domain into, right? There will not be any difference. Wherever, if you, if you look at this integral, wherever there is a chi term, there is a e term. So, if you do not if you do not know chi, you also do not know E at that point. So, the number of the size of x and the size of u is identical. So, x and u both are of size n. So, in this equation therefore, G s is of what size? It is a matrix of size m cross n. So, this is this is the reason why this is a underdetermined system of equations and uh, what is the problem with underdetermined system of equations? How many solutions from linear algebra we know? How many solutions does an under underdetermined system have? Infinite solutions, right? So you can have some a solution in the row space, but there are infinite null space components which can all give you exactly the same s. So this is the challenge of this problem. And m is the number number of measurements. Ah, okay, very good. I was waiting for you to ask this question. Why can't I, if I want to, let's say, discretize and find out my permittivity in a five by five grid, let's say twenty-five unknowns. What prevents me from taking twenty-five measurements? Then I'll get a square system of equations. No problem. I have to put. I have a lot of money. I can buy hundred receivers if I want. What's the problem? So actually, you, you you don't know enough to answer that question. So I'll give you the answer. There is there is another theorem in electromagnetics which we have not studied, which says that the fields, I mean the degrees of freedom in this field on the boundary is fixed. Okay. In some in in other words, uh, the number of variables, the maximum number of variables required to characterize the field on this boundary is fixed. And it is fixed by something that is determined by the size of the object. So, if the object size is fixed, the number of degrees of freedom available on the, scat on the scattered field is also fixed. So, it is if I put more sensors over there, I am not going to get more information. It is like oversampling a band limited field. Once I have satisfied Nyquist criteria, will I get more information by sampling fi finer and finer? No. Right. So, in fact, the theorem is uh, uh, a result which says that the scattered fields, right, let me, I should write, so scattered fields are spatially band limited, okay. This is a very famous paper by Italian person called Bucci. Is there any relation between 
there is no relation between n and m m and i mean m for example the number of measurements you can choose it to be at best how much what is given to you by nyquist rate okay so your this theorem is telling you that the fields are spatially band limited so you know you will not you will not get anything more you won't get anything more but then you still have the number same you have the number same but your gs matrix now is ranked deficient oh. right you will get a square matrix but it's it's not full rank and why is it not full rank because the uh, yeah sampling a, a signal beyond its nyquist rate is what happens is that one row will be linearly depend one column will be linearly dependent on the other column because there is no new information so that is that this is the real reason why you cannot go any further over here so what should you do you should typically choose a number of receivers to be at the sampling limit so that you don't lose any information but beyond that can't help you right so this is actually one of the reasons why this underground imaging is even more challenging because you are losing important information below the ground there is no way for you to recover it right so even though i mean yeah so that information is lost forever okay and this this uh, band limit depends on basically what is the dimension over here so if i want to image you know head size the head size is fixed for this head size the band limit is fixed if i make the object bigger then there is more information but if for a given head it's fixed but the if the object size is very small if the uh, yeah then we can add more if the object size is small then the band limit is even smaller so that means there's very little information so you need very few receivers no see the, the the amount of information is fixed by the size of the object so size of the object gives you the uh, maximum frequency the spatial band limit and that tells you how how frequently i should sample this is sampling in the space domain now if my object is very small consider the smallest possibility 1 pixel wide right so how many unknowns are there there are only two unknowns over there so in principle just two receivers you will get everything just one sec is that clear we are not dealing with rays this is wave optics so some or the other field will come to the receiver right there's no probability here once i send a wave with probability 1 is going to hit the object yeah. with probability 1 is going to get scattered and with probability 1 it will be received there's no if it were a ray then there's a chance it would will it hit or not but this is where in the wave optics regime for sure sir hmm. you know that uh, m is the basis m is the number of measurements number of yeah why okay yeah okay good question so if i know the band limit to be m why should i not take m measurements only i mean m pixels m unknowns what resolution will suffer okay i can solve the problem but the resolution that i'll get will probably be coarse you will well you will you won't get a clear idea you will get a fuzzy idea of what is there <laughs> you will get a fuzzy idea of what is in the domain no that's correct so that can be a, that is a strategy meant to get a good initial guess that is correct and that's a good idea so you choose m equal to n you can at least get a system which you can solve and that's your good initial guess okay now i i can give you some typical numbers in the in the microwave range if i take cross section of breast tissue or something the number of receivers is usually no more than 10 to 20 so m is no more than 10 to 20 so n is the square of the number of pixels right right i mean n is the number of pixels so if i even say 25 measurements what is the best you could do 5 cross 5 right 5 cross 5 so if i have let's say an object which is 10 cm by 10 cm i'm getting information only 2 cm but maybe i need more resolution than that so it's workable but not good enough so this is this is a challenge okay 